going to do, we're going to talk today about proper inspection of the SCBA and then the cope method of donning the SCBA. Proper inspection is, is crucial to your safety and survival while using an air pack during a, a, a fire or a house fire. <clears throat> the SCBA provides fresh air, breathable air in the, in the environments that we go into that are uh, toxic to our health. <clears throat> Initially you want to start out always with the bottle. This particular SCBA has a 45 minute bottle, uh, correction that will be a 60 minute bottle on this particular SCBA. You want to look at it, inspect the uh, air pack for any type of damage, any type of nicks, cuts, scrapes, anything that could be a detriment or remove some of the integrity of the bottle. Since this bottle holds 4,500 pounds of pressure, we want to make sure the bottle's in good shape. We also want to look at how much air is in the bottle. <clears throat> this particular bottle is full at 4,500 pounds. Anything less than 4,000, the bottle needs to be changed out. Your next inspection, or as you go through the inspection, the next thing you want to check are all the high pressure hoses. The hoses are what bring the air from the air bottle through the regulator to decrease the pressure and then into the regulator so it's a breathable pressure. Okay. All our straps, we need to check all our straps, make sure all the buckles, everything is fully extended to accommodate any wearer. If uh, someone who's smaller than the, the next guy who wears it and we do not extend these straps, then we're going to have a problem because he'll have difficulty putting it on. <clears throat> Once you have inspected all the pieces of the SCBA, you want to go to the face piece. You want to inspect your face piece for cracks, you want to be able to see through the face piece, make sure there's no uh, damage from the heat, and also check the voice amp to make sure it functions properly. <clears throat> all right. The next thing is going to be actually turning on the SCBA and checking the pass device or the personal alert safety system. As we turn on the SCBA, you'll notice that there are chirps. You want to always turn on the SCBA fully uh, just so there is no possibility of this valve being closed or freezing up and uh, shutting the air off while you're wearing it, while the user's wearing it. The initial vibration sound was the vibra alert inside the uh, regulator. The vibra alert is part of the low air system. When this bottle gets to about 25%, the vibra alert is going to go off and advise you that you have a certain amount of time to exit the structure. The other alarm that we heard was the pass system. PASS system is designed that if the firefighter is still for 30 seconds or more, then the alarms will start to initiate. You have a pre-alert and then a full alert. <clears throat> you want to, in the morning, turn on your air pack and allow this air pack to go into a full alert mode. So we're going to go ahead and wait just a moment and let it go into its pre-alert and then alert. This will be the pre-alert mode. You notice the lights and then the noise. It's going to continue to get louder and go into a full alert. Now reset the pass device. The full alert will <clears throat> continue to go off unless you reset it uh, yourself or when you're rescued by firefighters, they can reset your uh, pass device. All right, now we'll go ahead and turn off the bottle. And bleed the air out. Bleed the air out slowly and you'll be able to check the uh, vibra alert or the low air, the low air uh, alert while you do that. <clears throat> now reset the pass again. Okay, and that way, now we've done a successful pre-check. This should be done daily at every time you uh, are going to use the air pack, every time you come in. Uh, at shift change you want to check the air pack and make sure it's functional. The next thing we're going to demonstrate is the coat method of donning the air pack. 
with all the straps extended, you want to basically you're going to put this on exactly like you would a coat. Okay, your left arm goes into the left strap. Place your right arm into the strap. I like to bend over to carry some of the weight on my back. You want your shoulder straps just snug. The waist strap will actually be much tighter. If you tighten the waist strap and leave the shoulder straps just snug, then the majority of the weight is carried on your hips and not your shoulders, which will reduce the fatigue and you'll be able to wear the air pack longer. The next thing you'll do is place the face piece on there. Um, we're not going to do that at this time. So you can connect the face piece just for carrying on here. And that's it. That's a successful pre-check and donning of the air pack. You're ready to go to work. Any questions? Howard, sir, anyone? Do you have a question? I have one. Um, yes. I saw some lights when you turned on the the bottle on the regulators, the yeah. green and yet red lights. What do, what do those mean? This is a heads up LED display, and the green, yellow, and red is a visual cue to you of how much air you have left. All the lights lit up. You have a full bottle. As the lights decrease and you lose the green into the yellow. It gives you an idea of how much of the air is left. Yellow would be half red. The vibra alert should be going off here in a low air uh, situation. You need to exit the structure. Yes, sir. Well, what happens if you put it on and you don't get a light? <clears throat> Part of your pre-check should be to see if these lights work. If you get no lights at all, more than likely the most common problem is going to be batteries. There's two areas that batteries are carried in this particular air pack. Um, here's a battery inside the high pressure regulator that controls the LED, the heads up display. There are also batteries in the backpack that is for the pass device. So if you don't get the lights or you don't get the sounds that you know are supposed to occur, then you need to change the batteries. Yes, sir. In the actual fire environment, how long do you expect this hour bottle to last when you're working and this one? Those? Yes, this one, the 60 minute bottle is designed to last for 60 minutes, but due to firefighter fatigue, firefighter conditioning, the, the typical 60 minute bottle will last about 45 minutes. Uh, the 45 minute bottle that are, we frequently use is 20 to 25 minutes. All right. I didn't do more. Hmm. All right, sorry. Approximately, how much does a fully donned air pack weigh? This particular air pack weighs between 35 and 40 pounds. All right. Well, that's our conclusion for today. We have uh, gone over the pre-check. We've gone over the donning of the air pack, and thank you very much.